Good afternoon, and welcome to St. Jude the Apostle Parish as we celebrate the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's first reading, we hear God tell Isaiah, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. We welcome all who have come to this house of prayer today as we lift up our voices in prayer to our God. Please join in singing our opening hymn, Gather Your People, number 309 in the Breaking Bread book. That's number 309. Please rise. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves for this most holy Eucharist, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you proclaim the gospel of the kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you cured every disease among the people. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again at the end of time to gather the world to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, we are prepared for those who love you, good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and ab above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Today's readings can be found on page 191 in the front part of the Breaking Bread book. That's page 191. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord, and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, 
just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to, be, to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, how great is your faith! Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A man was getting a haircut one day, and a young boy walked past the window of the barber shop. The barber said to his customer in the chair, See that kid outside that window? He's the most foolish kid in the world. Watch, I'll prove it to you. So the barber yelled to the kid to come into the barber shop. Just then the barber pulled out a dollar bill and two quarters. In one hand, he had two quarters, and in the other hand, he placed the dollar bill. And he asked the little boy, Which will you choose? The boy did not hesitate. He took the two quarters from his hand, looked up at the barber, and smiled, and ran out the door. What did I tell you, the barber said. That kid never learns. Later, when the customer left, he saw that same young boy coming out of an ice cream store. Hey, son, may I ask a question? Why did you take the quarters instead of the dollar bill, the man said. The boy licked his ice cream and replied, Because I know the day that I choose the dollar, the game is over. <laughs> we laugh because it's funny, right? The little boy knew that he could come to get ice cream any time he wanted by choosing the coins over the dollar bill. I guess you could say he had the upper hand on the man. But what did the boy have to do to get those two quarters? What did he have to do to receive his reward? Persistent 
Humiliation is what that little boy went through. Having others look down upon him. And yet he suffered through it all to come to a result. He believed that in the end, the reward would be his. And so how must the Canaanite woman have felt when she was being ridiculed for her belief that Jesus could cure her daughter? How humiliated do we think she was as those around her were asking Jesus to send her away? You see, this woman was not Jewish. Therefore, they didn't want him to waste his time. Worse yet, she was being placed on the same level as a dog. We wouldn't take food from the children and give it to the dogs. Talk about an ouch. You see, this woman recognized that Jesus owed her nothing. And instead of turning away in shame, she beautifully turns the phrase around and states, but even the dogs get some of the food from the masters. You see, through all this humiliation, through all the tension, she kept her, per- persever- her, her persistence. She kept her faith. You see, just like the little boy in the story, there was a reward for her humble persistence in the end. It is easy for us to pray and lose faith if we don't receive an answer right away. In our age of instant gratification, we feel that our prayers should be answered quickly. Hey Alexa, hey Siri, hey Google lady, what's the weather going to be? It is easy for us to pray one time and come to a conclusion that God doesn't hear us. This is why it's so vitally important for us to come together and to learn from one another. Catholics have a moral obligation to attend Sunday Mass, and there are reasons for it. One is that we shape the faith of one another. You see, we learn from another. There's a phrase that I absolutely love, and the first time I saw it was at That Man Is You. And that phrase is, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We sharpen the faith of others by showing them our faith. The faith of that Canaanite woman must certainly have shaped the faith of those who saw, those who were trying to tell Jesus that she wasn't worth his time. So what then do we learn from persistent prayer? We learn about humility and more about our faith. Humility in the fact that things are beyond our control, that we need to let go of what we want and allow God to give us what we need. Earlier in the Gospel of Matthew, there was a Roman soldier who comes to Jesus and asks him to heal his paralyzed soldier. Upon Jesus' arrival, the soldier says, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my servant shall be healed. Yet another non-Jewish person humbling themselves before our Jesus. Jesus tells the crowd in that story, No one in Israel have I found such faith. Too often we feel justified because we are Christians. Yet the centurion had faith, faith that when he asked, he would receive. When he knocked, the door would be open. We must continue to keep asking God. We must continue to keep knocking through prayer, and we must continue to seek God. And when these things are completed, it will not be because we deserve them. It will be because our God loves us more than we could ever imagine. Humility. Humility in prayer. Humility in persistent prayer. So what do we do when God is silent? Do we continue to talk to him, or do we shy away? 
May we all be humble enough to know that God is there and have sharp enough faith to keep persistent in our prayers. Like the little boy, like the centurion, like the Canaanite woman, may we come back with a humble and persistent heart. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We bring our prayers to our merciful God with joyous hearts. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit guide us in all things, helping us to observe what is right and do what is just. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, May the Spirit help to unite people across cultures, races, and religions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have been affected by the fires in Maui, may they find the strength, resilience, and healing needed to rebuild their families, livelihoods, and their physical structures that were lost. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Lord stir our hearts for beginning and ending all days in praise of his goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this past week, especially Anna Tischendorf, and for those who are mourning the loss of someone dear to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs within our prayer boxes, the needs expressed through the prayer chain, and for those held within the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, including those for the repose of the soul of Francis Miller, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and grant us what we need, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the gifts are being presented and the altar is being set, please join in singing our offertory hymn, Prayer of St. Francis, number 534. That's number 534.
sentence me from my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The the Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Only we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced through eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. By the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life.
Today's hymn for communion is number 340, Behold the Lamb. That's number 340.
the announcements for this weekend. The monthly holy hour is this Wednesday, August 23rd at 6 o'clock p.m. at Sacred Heart Church. All are invited to attend. As part of the National Eucharistic Revival, the citywide Eucharistic mission is hosted by the Oshkosh Parishes September 11th through the 13th at St. Mary's Church. In preparation for the mission, Father James Kubicki, who features on Relevant Radio, will preach at all the Masses here at our parish on the weekend of September 9th and 10th. The flyers with the schedule and speakers are available in the bulletin and also at all the entrances. In appreciation and gratitude for your loving service, we invite all the volunteers for an appreciation dinner on Thursday, August 24th at 5 o'clock p.m. in Leanna Hall. Whether you volunteered for an hour or a day, all are invited to attend. Please RSVP to the parish office. Starting September 5th, the Legion of Mary will be reading the book, The Secret of the Rosary, by St. Louis de Monfort. It's a weekly meeting on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m. in the parish center. And lastly, registration for the religious ed program is open. Please see the bulletin for registration. Thank you. Let us pray. May partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that confirmed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his squares in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn for today is number 556. Sing a new song. That's number 556. Green.